What is the risk of cancer? And how does the risk influence the management of my Barrett's esophagus? Hello, this is Dr. Conda, and I'm here to talk to you about Barrett's esophagus, a potentially serious complication of gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. This video is part of an educational series on the disease. In this chapter, we will explain the risk of Barrett's turning into esophageal cancer and how this risk influences the management of the disease. We recommend that patients with high-grade dysplasia get treated as they are at the highest risk for developing esophageal cancer at the rate of 6% to 12% per person per year, or even higher if they should have any nodules or visible lesions. This means that the risk is increased over a longer period of time, meaning that younger patients may have more cumulative risk over their lifetime than people at advanced ages. Those patients who have low-grade dysplasia are thought to have a lower risk of progression to cancer at approximately 0.5% per person per year. But not all patients are similar, and some may carry a higher risk of progression to cancer. Patients may be at lower, or higher risk for developing cancer based on other clinical factors, such as gender, age, race, weight, and family history. Endoscopic features, such as the length of the Barrett segment or the presence of visible lesions, also contribute to risk. Those patients with no dysplasia have less than a 0.3% per person per year chance of developing esophageal cancer. Most of these patients would likely not benefit from aggressive treatments and multiple endoscopies to completely eliminate the Barrett's tissue, as these treatments come with an associated risk. Sometimes it is hard to understand the true risk of developing cancer and make the difficult decision to undergo treatment. Think about it this way. Imagine you are in a train station with multiple trains going to multiple destinations, and one of those destinations is esophageal cancer. Patients who have high-grade dysplasia are on that train going to esophageal cancer. We can't know if the cancer is the next stop or if it is five stops from now, but you're heading in that direction and we're gonna do whatever it takes to get you off that train to keep you from getting esophageal cancer. We are going to cut it, burn it, or freeze it and accept that there may be some risk associated with these procedures in order to get you off that train. For those patients who have low-grade dysplasia, we need more information to determine if you're high or low risk to go on to develop cancer. It is like you're in a ticket line. You may be getting on that train and it is the right time, but we don't know that you'll actually get on that train. We might need more information by looking at your ticket, by doing another endoscopy, a tissue cipher test, or doing an endoscopic mucosal resection of a lesion before deciding about therapy. If you have no dysplasia, consider that just being present in the train station, but not likely getting on that specific train. We consider your risk of developing cancer as very low. Although we may perform an endoscopy with more rigorous evaluation or an additional test like tissue cipher to be sure you are not getting on that train later. If it's a tiny, short segment, or an ultra short segment without any concerning features, it's like you're just having lunch at the train station and not even traveling that day. We hope that you found this video informative and that you have a better understanding of Barrett's esophagus and the potential risk of the disease. Learn more about assessing your five-year risk as a patient with Barrett's esophagus